Hey kids, good morning. It's breakfast time. But what do you do with Rice Krispie treats, marshmallows, and fruit powder? You make. Hey folks, it's Darcy from the Purple Soul Pantry and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the coolest treat that I have been working on all week and been teasing my dehydrating group about. Oh, I've got this cool thing. One of the questions I get asked most is what do you do with the dehydrated products that you've made? And you put them on your shelf, then what do you do with them? Fruit powders are one of those things that people just kind of don't understand why you use them or why you make them because they don't really see how to use them. I've even got a, a blog post and I'll list it down below of, of 25 plus ways of using fruit powders. Um, but today we're going to be doing a special treat that is a fruit flavored Rice Krispie treat with our fruit powders. Today we happen to be using strawberry, um, but you can use blackberry, raspberry, uh, pumpkin. Yeah, you can do pumpkin um, and any other kind of flavors that you have already available in your pantry that you've already created to make these special Rice Krispie treats. So stay tuned. All right, to do our Rice Krispie treats, what you're going to need is uh, Rice Krispies, whether you use name brand or store brand, doesn't matter. I happen to have name brand because they substituted the store brand when I did grocery pickup last week. You need a bag of fresh mini marshmallows. Um, you can use a large ones too, but the really important thing about this is that you use fresh, not something that's been in your pantry for 12 months to three years. They won't work as well. You need butter. We're gonna use about half a stick of butter. Um, you're gonna need an, a pan to put your finished Rice Krispie Treats in. I prefer a smaller pan, which makes them thicker. Um, it keeps them softer than if you use a shallow pan and make them thin. They tend to get hard faster. And then you need a fruit powder of your choice. I'm gonna link you down below to how I do raspberry powder and strawberry powder uh, and blackberry powder. Uh, and then the, the blog post that goes with them to teach you all the steps. Today, I happen to have blackberry, strawberry, and raspberry. Today, we're gonna to be doing strawberry Rice Krispie treats, but on the blog, there will be the uh, tutorial along with blackberry and a printable recipe sheet that you can uh, just print off right there and have the recipe available to you all the time. So let's get started. Okay, I have a quarter cup of butter already melting. Um, the recipe usually calls for unsalted butter. Unfortunately, I don't stock unsalted butter. Um, if I'm gonna, I rarely use it, I always use salted. So, but we're using what we use because that's what we have in stock. So I've got my butter melting on low. You do not want to do this on a medium to high temperature because you don't want to overdo the marshmallow melting. You don't want to burn them. Do this low and slow. I'm adding a quarter cup, a scant quarter cup of strawberry powder. This makes everything really sweet at the end so you can have some really like breakfast cereal flavored Rice Krispie treats when you're done. So I, I try to do a little less because this has the same amount of sugar in, uh, in this as it does in fresh strawberries. So we do just like a scant quarter cup of strawberry powder or any fruit powder that you wanna use. So I'm gonna put that in and I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up some and it will cake up a little bit and it's okay because what's gonna happen is that as this incorporates the moisture in the butter, it's going to begin to uh, reconstitute and um, become like a little bit of a puree. Then as the marshmallows melt, it sort of just does this magical thing where it just doesn't matter. So now what we're going to do is add our bag of mini marshmallows. And remember, you really want fresh because if they're stale marshmallows, they just don't um, melt the same way and they tend to become kind of harder in your final product than if you had fresh. Um, I leave the stale marshmallows to dehydrating, and that way we have dehydrated marshmallows all the time. And for those of you in the dehydrating group, which I will link below, um, yes, we're doing marshmallows today, but they're not dried. When I put a, a little teaser to the video that this is what I was doing, quite a few people asked if I was dehydrating marshmallows. It's like, no, oh, I've already done all those. So, but we are using marshmallows today. So I'm going to give this, this usually takes about 10 minutes to, man, maybe not that long. This takes a little while when you do it really slow because you want to make sure you melt these well, not melt these fast. So we're going to do a little time lapse so that you don't have to wait for me. Okay. 
one thing to mention that you want to keep stirring this. You don't want to just leave it and set it and walk away because your marshmallow will burn on the bottom of your pan, especially if you don't have a heavy bottom pan. You can use any kind of saucepan that you have. You can use a Dutch oven. Um, you can use whatever you happen to have that you would normally cook in like this. Um, just don't walk away and let them melt because you don't want this burning on the bottom at all. Okay, we're getting very near the end. Let me see if I can tilt that up for you so you can see. Um, this is what it begins to look like. You just keep mixing it. And the thing to remember too is that you don't over process this uh, strawberry, I mean this um, mixture because what you don't wanna do is get the sugars working too much. Um, you wanna keep this soft and pliable so that when you make your Rice Krispie treats, they say softer um, and don't get really hard, which is one of the reasons why you might have really hard Rice Krispie treats is the fact that you've overworked your marshmallow mixture um, amongst some other reasons. And in the blog post, I'll actually put some of those and how to fix that um, or how to keep from doing that. So here we go. We're pretty much right at the very end of getting this all thoroughly mixed and melted. So you can see what it looks like. This is strawberry marshmallow cream. Sort of. I don't know what fluff is, so this is close to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add um, our Rice Krispie treats. Typical recipes call for six cups. I tend to do a little less because we like ours a little softer, a little gooier. So you can use the amount that you want. Um, we just prefer it a little softer. So I use about five and a half cups, maybe five and three quarters. A little less Rice Krispies than you need. Turn off your temperature, get it off the heat. So I've tilted it up a little bit to keep it off the heat so we can still stay in the camera. And I'm just going to gently mix this through and let it all incorporate. This is a fun treat for your kids to do along with you to start teaching them how to cook and how to make easy, easy treats. Just remember that this stuff is really hot right now because it's hot sugar. So make sure that you're keeping an eye on them if they're just learning how to do this so that they don't get their hands stuck in all of that hot sugar. So I'm gonna finish doing this and then we'll get our pan out and ready to go. We're just about finished. Yeah, it looks like we're jumping ahead just a little bit and sorry about that. Um, my camera stopped recording, so here we are now. So what I've done is just put them in the pan and I am gently pressing the mixture into my pan. I am not cramming it down and I'm making a little bit of a mess. Um, I'm just gently pressing this into my pan to get it nice and in, in there. Um, I'm gonna repeat myself in a minute because I don't know what cut off. So here we go. Uh, recipes, often the traditional recipe calls for you to spray the bottom of your pan to make these easier to come off. I don't do that. Um, I also don't use parchment paper on the bottom of it to keep to make it easier to come out or to clean. I'm happy with it the way it is. I don't need to do that extra. Um, some tips about putting this in. If you do your marshmallows into a very small, thin layer, they're going to get harder much faster. If you do them thicker, they stay softer longer. Um, if you press really hard, you're going to mash this into a hard brick and that doesn't always work out well in the end because it makes them hard. So we just do a gentle press down into our pan. When I'm ready to serve, I will often cut around the edge and flip this over to cut. Um, but at this point, we're just going to let this sit and we're going to let it warm, uh, cool off. Oh, see, I should have just left it alone. If your stuff gets really sticky like this, what you can do is put your spatula under some cold water or if you're using your fingers, some cold water, press down on it, and then just repeat as necessary. So we're going to let this sit and get ready to serve in about 30 minutes. Usually doesn't take that long, but that's about how long we let it sit if we can hold out that long. Something fun to do too is if you have, uh, once you've had it, um, let it cool for a little while, take some of your marshmallow treat, squinch it and make marshmallow balls. They're fun to eat. You can actually even then dip these into like a candy, um, some small candy treats, or maybe even in, ooh, 
just had a thought. We'll try this because I bet this will make it pretty cool and awesome. We always just ate them like this. As a kid, my mom would do this for us. But then take this, dip it in a little extra strawberry powder to make it all nice and festive. That would work too. That would make it pretty awesome. And that's going to be pretty sweet and pretty tart. Uh, but that would make a fun way to do it as well. Another way to use your strawberry powder, your, uh, your fruit powders. So what I'm going to do now is show you. I'm going to stick that right there for the moment. I'm going to take a very sharp knife. I have my little uh, parry knife here that I'm going to take. And I'm just going to walk through and cut into my Rice Krispie Treats. And get them ready to serve. Now you could dust the top of these with strawberry powder if you wanted to. You could coat this with a little white chocolate uh, and just sprinkle across the top. And I made that not quite right. You could just drizzle a white chocolate across the top to serve them. Um, we serve them in pretty small squares because they're full of a lot of carb. And they're meant to be treats, not breakfast. Even though sometimes you'll find us having these for breakfast. Because it's breakfast cereal, right? Yep, I did it again. There's going to be some bigger ones. That's fine. That won't hurt anything. And then when you pull them out, and remember, these are still relatively fresh. They're a little bit gooey still. There. That makes it perfect for presentation. There is your strawberry rice crispy treat. Now, while it didn't turn pink, it has a definite strawberry flavor. I tasted some before we put it before uh, with the leftovers that were still in the pan. So, your fresh, yummy rice crispy treats with strawberry powder any powder that you want. You can use pumpkin and some pumpkin spice to have pumpkin spice. You can add some peanut butter powder into a regular um, Rice Krispie Treat recipe to make peanut butter Rice Krispie Treats. You can do any kind of fruit powder that you want. I've even used vegetable powder to put inside of my Rice Krispie Treats and the kids never knew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you a tip here on how to create dehydrated powder fruit powders. I'm going to use raspberry and strawberry. Then I, there's a, a video here from YouTube that says this is what you should watch next. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.